Hello everybody, I am Master Hypnotist Thomas Brezzadola, and I'm gonna give you some tips on weight loss. Today we're going to dive into a topic that many of you have been asking about, and that is effective tips for weight loss. Now if you're on a journey towards a healthier you, then this video is a much watch. So let's just jump right in. Now tip number one is setting realistic goals. Now about setting realistic goals, when embarking on a weight loss journey, it's crucial to set achievable targets. You might want to lose weight fast, but remember, slow and steady often wins the race when it comes to sustainable weight loss. Aim for losing one to two pounds a week, which is both healthy and attainable. Now, setting realistic goals is a fundamental step in any successful endeavor, be it personal or professional. The importance of this cannot be overstated. Realistic goals provide a clear direction and a roadmap to success. Now, realistic goals act as guideposts, and these guideposts keep you on track. They offer tangible targets that you can work towards, making your aspirations more achievable and less overwhelming. Now, when setting goals, there are, you want to make them that they're attainable. You don't want to go too far out with setting your goals. You know, set smaller goals, especially when you're losing the weight. You, you want to see some of your goals met because it makes you feel good. Now, when we feel good, we foster a sense of self-efficacy and motivation. And with each small victory, each goal met fuels our confidence and propels us forward towards the next goal. This process of achieving, this process of setting new goals, creates a positive feedback loop within our mind and helps us accomplish and keep us motivated on that path to lose the weight. Now, on the contrary, setting unrealistic goals can lead to frustration, a sense of failure, and eventually demotivation. So this is what's really important what we're talking about is setting realistic goals. If you set unrealistic goals, it's like setting yourself up for failure. You might aim high, but if your goal is unattainable, you're likely to fall short, which can be just so disheartening and it derails your progress in losing weight. And I'm here for you. I, I want you to lose weight. I want you to succeed. Now, now remember, realistic goals encourage, encourage you to keep going. Now, when you're faced with obstacles on your weight loss journey, knowing that you've reached previous goals makes it easier to reach with inside you and inspire yourself to move on rather than give up. In essence, setting realistic goals is not about limiting potential, but about harnessing potential. It's about understanding your abilities and working systematically towards your ambitions. Now, you want to be celebrating each achievement along the way. This practice cultivates resilience, determination, growth mindset, all which are integral to long-term success. Now, keeping the weight loss goals at a realistic pace, really important. And by doing this, you will achieve weight loss success. Tip number two, portion control. Oh, don't we all like to go out to dinner and get that big plate of food? I sure do. But portion control, it is a really, really important when you're losing weight. It's a crucial element towards the effective weight loss journey. The reason for this lies in the fundamental principle of weight loss, counting calories. That's right, counting calories. You want to burn more calories than you eat. You are creating a calorie deficit, which means consuming fewer calories than your body burns in a day. By controlling the portions of your meals, 
You can better regulate your cal calorie intake and ensure that it aligns with your weight loss goals. Often it's not just about what you eat, but how much you eat. So that's really important. Not just those foods you're selecting to eat, but you don't want to overeat foods that are considered healthy because they can contribute to weight gain. If you, that's what a lot of people do. They'll, they'll go, oh, I'm, I'm eating, you know, boneless chicken, but you're eating 10 pounds of it. It's not going to help you with the weight gain. So it's that portion control. So when you're having this really good meal, you want to make sure you have a nice, healthy portion, not this giant portion for a small portion. Now, something else I want to talk about is like avocados, nuts, olive oil. Now, they're packed with all these nutrients, but they're also high in calories. People don't realize that. And consuming without mindful portion control could inadvertently lead to a calorie surplus, meaning you, you're eating too many calories. And this hinders the weight loss efforts. Portion control does aid in cultivating a better understanding of serving sizes. Now, this is really good because portion control encourages you to eat slow. And in doing so, this slow eating, your body interprets that as you're getting full. So that's a very positive. So you want to eat slower along with having a smaller portion. You better, you will find a smaller portion when you eat it slowly, you're going to enjoy it far much better. Over time, this practice is going to help you retrain your appetite, making you feel satisfied with smaller servings and reducing the likelihood of overeating. Now, in essence, portion control is not about deprivation. It isn't but about balance and moderation. It's a sustainable approach to weight loss that promotes long-term success and overall wellness. So once again, portion control, very important. You wanna weigh out the foods. You want to make sure you eat the food slowly and you are going to find that you enjoy your meals much, much better. Tip number three. Now, tip number three revolves around regular exercise. Oh, okay, right there, I just lost everybody. Nobody wants to exercise. I wanna tell you right now, exercise is a vital component of weight loss for numerous reasons. At the most basic level, physical activity helps burn calories, contributing to the creation of the calorie deficit that's required for weight loss. You want to burn more calories than you are eating. Now, however, the benefits of exercise extend far beyond just burning calories. Regular physical activity increases the body's metabolism, leading to more efficient calorie burning, even when it rests. Now, this is really good because if you're not exercising, it's, chances are your metabolism slowed on down. Now, your body, you have to understand this, at, at one time, humans were hunters and gatherers and we, we, would, we would walk all over the face of the earth because we had to find food. And so when we would find food, we'd eat the food and we'd pack on the pounds and that is what the body wants to do. With, very, uh, uh, with a lot of calories, it can put on weight because the body at those times, way back when, you didn't know when you were going to get another meal. So packing on the pounds is very, very easy. Now that's part of survival. But in our modern age, in our modern age, when you have a sedentary life, you gain weight even quicker. Now exercise plays a significant role in preserving lean muscle mass during weight loss. You don't wanna lose muscle mass, you wanna lose the fat. When we lose weight, we want to lose the fat. We don't want to lose the muscle mass. So regular strength training, it can help preserve and even increase muscle mass. Now, let me pause right here. I wanna let you know that muscle weighs more than fat. So if you end up increasing your muscle mass, you may get on the scale and say, gee, I'm burning more calories, I'm eating less food, I'm exercising, why am I gaining weight? Well, you gotta see that your body is changing around if you're gaining more muscle mass. Understand 
that muscle burns more calories than fat. So having more muscle mass increases the number of calories you're going to burn throughout the day. So yeah, exercise will burn off calories. Exercise makes more muscle mass and in turn that more muscle mass burns off more calories you can see how this is an upward spiral furthermore exercise is beneficial for weight loss because it improves the mood improves uh, and re reduces stress and the factors associated with overeating and regular physical activity re releases those wonderful endorphins the body's natural mood elevators which, which can help you curb emotional eating additionally exercise can boost confidence and motivation making it easier to stick to other healthy habits needed for weight loss such as maintaining a balanced diet in essence exercise is not just an add-on but an integral part of any successful weight loss strategy. So you don't have to go join a gym. You can just go and, and buy uh, some, ex some weights or walk around the house. You don't need to go out and buy all this fancy exercise equipment. The best thing you have is, is just walking. Get out there and walk. Get out there and do that 10,000 steps a day. You'll find by doing that, you will make weight loss easier for you. Okay, here we go. Tip number four, drink more water. Tip number four is simple yet effective. Drink more water. Drinking water plays a vital role in weight loss for several reasons. First, it adds in maintaining optimal body functions, including metabolism, which is crucial for burning calories and fat. Staying well hydrated ensures that your metabolism is working efficiently, adding in weight loss. Secondly, water can act as a natural appetite suppressant. Often we mistake thirst for hunger, leading to unnecessary calorie intake. Drinking water regularly, especially before meals, can help control cravings and prevent overeating. Thirdly, water helps in digestion by preventing constipation and maintaining a healthy gut, which is essential for weight management. Additionally, drinking water can also help reduce liquid calorie intake. Substituting high calorie beverages, for example, like soda, juice, sweetened coffee. If you substitute those with water, you can significantly reduce your overall calorie consumption. People don't think about that. Just if you're drinking soda, and you need to wean yourself off of soda because it's that carbonation you like, this is what you do. This is how you go from soda to drinking water. You go, you stop drinking soda, replace it with carbonated water. Perrier, uh, Pellegrino, any of those, any of those uh, uh, sparkling waters. It's gonna literally take you months, but first you've got yourself off that sugar that's in the soda and all the other chemicals that are in there. So you got carbonated water. You can do tonic water, that's fine. But carbonated water. And after a few months of doing that, you're gonna find you don't even want soda. Hey, I, I used to drink soda, that's all I did. Now I'm just on water and that's what I did. I, I went to carbonated water and I did it for probably close to a year. And then I just went to bottled water, which is fine. And I also have a filter on my faucet which I really like the water that comes out of that filter. It's really good. So even when I go to a restaurant, I order water. And if you have a hard time just drinking water, that's because you've been using flavored drinks for so many years. You can put lemon in it. You can put lime in it. You can put some other flavorings in it. But you want to stay away from the sugared flavorings. And lastly, water is essential for workout efficiency. Dehydration can limit your ability to reduce the number of calories burned because you're not drinking enough water. So even if you are out there doing that 10,000 steps, make sure you've got that bottle of water. Hydration, stay hydrated. It helps you ensure that you get the most out of your workouts and it promotes weight loss. So in summary, I'm gonna tell you this right now, while water may not be the magic weight loss potion, it isn't. It's importance 
and weight loss regimen is undeniable. You have to drink that water. Now, rule of thumb, how much water do you want to drink a day? It's what you're comfortable with. And you probably want to be within that 64 to 96 ounces of water a day. And you're going to find, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to find it's going to take about five days. Let's just say you drank a gallon. Oh, excuse me, not a gallon. That's 128 ounces. Let's say you drank um, uh, 64 ounces in a day. You're going to find the first couple of days you're going to be going to the bathroom a lot because your body's not used to it. And then in that fourth or fifth day, you're going to find that the, the water is staying in your system and you are going to feel better. Okay, here we go. Tip number five, go to sleep. Yeah, I said it. I know a lot of you are saying, hey, that's not, that's not difficult. I get enough sleep. Uh, so I, I want to tell you, it is very important that you do get that like six, seven hours of sleep. All right. Because why getting enough sleep, the lack of sleep can interfere with your body's hunger hormones and could lead to weight gain. All right. So you want to get enough sleep. And if you find yourself waking up many times in the middle of the night, you may have sleep apnea. And even though you're getting six hours of what you think is sleep, you're not getting a quality sleep. So if you are snoring, if you snore, you do have, well, I'm not gonna say you do have, but it's quite possible that you have sleep apnea. Because when you are snoring, you are closing down your airway. So it's making it more difficult to breathe. So that's one of the signs that people may have that sleep apnea. And that's where, again, your body stop, literally stops breathing. And then you have to, your body will shake you, will literally just start shaking to wake you up. And then a lot of times you'll wake up coughing, trying to gasp for air. And if you have been doing that, that, that you have to go see a sleep doctor. So very important. You have to try your best to get that six hours minimum of quality sleep every night. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you have a mattress that's like 10 years old, it's time for a new one. A life of a mattress is that eight to 10 years. And that's if you've been flipping it properly, uh, like twice a year, you have to flip it and spin it. If you have one of those uh, like foam mattress, uh, mattresses like the Tempur-Pedic uh, they don't have to be they don't have to be uh, flipped but what people don't understand or realize is those microfibers do break down so that memory foam doesn't come back to its best sleeping comfort so those two after that 10 15 years uh, do have to be replaced all right tip number six Keep a food diary. That's right, keep a food diary. Tracking what and when you eat can help you identify patterns. Now this will help you understand your eating habits way better than not keeping track. And here's the thing, you can keep track using your smartphone. That's right, there's apps to keep track of your eating habits. And this is an effective strategy for several reasons. First, it provides a convenient, accessible way to log your food intake and make it easier to maintain consistency and accuracy, which is so important when you're keeping track of what you're eating. Most of us carry a smartphone everywhere and we can quickly enter our meals and snacks as soon as we consume them, reducing the likelihood of forgetting or underestimating what we've eaten. Second, many of the apps, they offer a comprehensive food database providing detailed information and nutritional information for a wide range of foods, including restaurant and prepackaged items. This allows us to gain a better understanding of our caloric intake and nutrition distribution. You have to remember, you have to understand what you're eating, how much you're eating, what nutrients you're getting to keep yourself healthy. 
Now third, food tracking apps often come with additional features such as goal setting, progress tracking, and personalized insights, which can enhance the motivation and accountability. They can also help identify patterns, triggers within our eating habits and enabling us more informed dietary changes. And lastly, some apps even offer social features where you can connect with other community members like yourself for inspiration and support. In essence, using a smartphone app to track your eating will serve as a powerful tool in achieving your dietary and weight loss goals. And something else about the social platforms with putting up there how well you're doing on your diet, that, that inspiration for others really drives you to reach your goals. That wraps up our essential tips for weight loss. Remember, everyone's journey is unique. So find what works best for you and stick to it. Consistency is the key when it comes to losing weight. Most importantly, be patient with yourself. This is a journey. It's a journey, it's not a race. And I wanna thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video if you found it helpful. But, hey, tell your friends about me, Master Hypnotist Thomas Brezzadola and the YouTube channel, The Mind Traveler. You know what, I think they'd like it. Until next time, stay healthy and keep moving towards your weight loss journey.